Thank you very much. Oh, I'm rather loud. Okay, I hope this is fine. Buongiorno. This will be the only Italian word I use today. And this way, my excuses, my apologies that the speech will be in English. Even if my English is more German or international English, but I hope that's fine for you too. Yeah, um, the announcement is really big, saying the truth. Um, it's because Emanuele and Marco um, asked me to hold an inspiring speech. And as it must be inspiring, um, I just skip the agency presentation we have usually. And I come to some other interesting point that uh, concerns all of us. Um, but allow me to go through two charts just telling you who we are, who I work for. Our agency is called Hirschen Group. Hirschen is deer in German. That's why we use that as a logo. Founded uh, 20 years ago. We have 500 employees. We are the fifth largest uh, agency in Germany and are usually ranked among the top three, top five creative agencies in Germany. 260 million billings and about 100 clients. Our clients list is rather diverse. So we work for spirits, for example, for energy supplier, for shipping company for electronic devices or automotive or even some interesting things like German government or Green Party in Germany or some Italian companies like Ferrero, Nutella, Kinder or Campari. This was it about the agency presentation. We, uh, I will have the website later where you can uh, check. Okay, this is what I want to share with you. It's um, two years ago, we put together a team in our agency for one simple reason, that we had the feeling, discussing with our people, discussing with agency people, other of other agencies, and even with clients, we had this feeling of this world is getting really crazy. This world is changing and it's gonna change even more. How? Can we manage that? How can we make it to basically survive as an agency? Or even what can we do as a, an industry to survive the digital transformation? Or not only survive, maybe even get better off after the digital, trans, uh, digital transformation has happened. This was the original idea. And the outcome of all this was one year later was Talking about digital, we published that, which is really old school, new newspaper, black and white, barely no pictures. This is the outcome of our post-digital discussion, uh, and you will be free to take a copy after this speech. Um, we defined that as a uh, kind of food for thought, as a thinking paper as, uh, to share with uh, our colleagues. And it's what I want to do with you today, is to share our 10 ideas. We call them the truth, but as you know, it's advertising. It's heavily exaggerated, of course. I think that there are some interesting truths, but some truths you would say like, this is conventional wisdom, everybody knows. But for us, it was very interesting because it was summarizing up what I think our industry is and uh, puts together what the challenges of our industries, of our industry are. So we started with what every good marketing guy does. What is our target group? And this was the change. It was basically everybody. It was everybody working in our broad environment. It was even the canvasser, the politician, the designer, media manager, etc. And this is the first fundamental change that our target group as advertisers is not anymore just the advertising director of a company. It's basically everybody. It's a lot of people involved. I think that most of you are experiencing it also. Uh, also. And we as a company, are going through that all the time. Sometimes you just talk to 
a not director and a copywriter, very traditional, but sometimes you talk to a, you need a corporate blogger working with a media manager, which is a completely different world, a completely different approach of working. So this was the first change that we realized that the, our target group as a advertising and communication agency is changing, is broadening. What was the first truth we found out? It is, we put it on one small film. I think you know that. You, uh, you know this effect? Uh, we get more and more information and we know less and less about everything, basically. And this happens to the professional communication world, too, that basically everyone is more stupid than he was 20 or even 40 years ago, where things were kind of clear or felt clear. And so that this feeling of stupidity with the client and with us is strong. Uh, to be honest, this line run, run first, uh, the clients got stupid, but we didn't want to lose all our clients. So we ch changed it to we got stupid, but it's true. We realize that it's true, that everyone is kind of getting stupid. But first reaction is, oh, we need help. Never, basically, who, who is to blame for it? What is it? And of course, the answer is simple. You know, it's the, what we call high-tech tsunami, you know. Even Lithuania nowadays, you know, you have 900 TV channels. You can live in Lithuania or in Uganda, and you have, can have 20,000 radios in the world through internet. You know, this shows what profound change we are in. This could be my daughter, you know. She's a kind of voluntary ADD, you know. Uh, um, it's a de attention deficit disorder, you know. <laughs> and uh, my daughter would do that plus she would uh, take her meal here as uh, and i think this is basically the world we are in too and of course you know having this tsunami ad and having us not only her doing everything at the same time makes you m basically feeling more stupid than before what is interesting at the end of the day is if you analyze it, okay, you can say like, oh, the world is going under, it's all so bad, but you can always realize one thing, that basically all this, what is happening, is making smart people smarter and dumb people dumber. The learning for us, for us as communication industry, for us here, to us is we are in a new world. We are... Uh, in the world where the smart and successful people are not the ones who know everything, like 30 years ago, it was like, I must know everything and every little detail of every customer. No, we cannot know everything. And the successful one is more like this. As you Greek know, <laughs> I only know that I know nothing. It's the Socrates uh, sentence, and it's, it's right. You got to be aware of it. And if you're aware as a marketing manager, for example, or as, an, as a communication agency, I think that you can later better deal with it, deal with these constant changes. Coming to the second truth. First, we, got, we were stupid. And the second one is we are all naked. What are we... What do we mean by that? Everyone basically knows what we did last summer. I don't know if you remember this story of this, um, the British Secret Service boss, you know, the, sh the boss of the, of the British intelligence. Uh, his, he was fired. Why? Because his daughter posted in Facebook their vacation pictures, real time. So everyone knew where the, everyone could know where the British intelligence chief was. Uh, this is a problem. But this makes one thing clear, that everything is basically transparent. Everything is WikiLeaks, is Snowden, it's 
iCloud, etc. It's every one of you got this too. You know, hundreds of celebrities in Hollywood has been kind of leaked, you know, with their naked pictures. I think this is very important for us too as communication professionals. As, you know, 30 years ago, you know, it was, I, I, I grew up with a sentence of advertising is lying, which was a little bit true, true. Nowadays, it doesn't make any sense to kind of try to come to get away with a lie in your communication because it will be leaked immediately by somebody. That's why in communication, just don't try to hush up the truth. Second, lies, if you lie, you will get everywhere. Everywhere in terms of whatever you say will likely be online in a minute, which changes fundamentally also the way we and you work or will work the next years. Key learning, here's the positive formula, is transparency. All is about transparency. Transparency will rule. So for your communication, that means it must be honest. It must be open. It must be sustainable, of course, decent. And by the way, interestingly, if you as a company, for example, you take it to heart, people will find it easier if there is some mistake happening somewhere in your communication. As you have been honest. Come to truth number three. This is about the shift of power we are experiencing. The shift of power from marketing people or even politicians to the people. Not only Occupy uh, Wall Street or what is happening in Hong Kong for the moment is a uh, witness of that. Uh, remember, remember the Arab revolution that happens basically through Facebook. So it's kind of a you know, kudos to the collective that is uh, happening for the moment. What does that mean? It means that as even a politician, even Hosni Mubarak in Egypt, you know, m must kiss control goodbye. We as communication people or we as advising brands must tell our clients just kiss control goodbye. You cannot control everything what is told about you, about your brand, etc. You can offer information, but you cannot control it. And this is very interesting because in our daily life in our daily working life it happens often that clients wants to have the control of everything and we try to kind of teach them and tell them no that is definitely not possible anymore it's the other way around you got to try to take advantage you got to try to take advantage of what's happening see nutella for example 29 million uh, facebook friends mercedes benz 16 millions but they just have a handful of managers, of communication managers. So who is in power here? The 20 million or the 100? Of course, the collective is in power so that we as communication professional must try to take advantage of the creativity that is out here for our client. This is... Um, a hard truth, an inconvenient truth that is coming. It is this here. Ideas, I'm so sorry for everyone who wants to start the advertising here or who works, etc. Do Do something else. Sell pizza also. As uh, if you just want to live with ideas, it'll be a hard time. Sure, I, I am exaggerating a little bit, but it is really hard as an advertising company, for example, to just sell ideas. Remember 30 years ago, every advertiser was with a Ferrari or with a Porsche. Nowadays, it's a, there are fewer of them. Why? Because ideas are just not paid. I took this from a, a website. It's even a year ago. You see that? Expensive ads, no thanks. It's okay. But is this okay here? Logo for a solar company, 99 euros. And most of you might know that. 
it is unbelievable with uh, what prices uh, you are competing with as a communication professional. And this happens through a lot of stages in communication. And I'm pretty sure that everyone is, of you is experiencing it. And uh, I hope that it will not end and that we will dance for food, you know, kind of be creative for some food that uh, clients are giving us. It won't be that way, but it's the impression you can have. Where will it end? You know, this was the question we had, basically, kind of, where will it end? You know, will we compete in 10 years' time with the 99 Euro, Euro logo? The... Our answer was advertising, the traditional advertising is dead, the traditional selling of ideas, th this is dead. But we don't give up and just go home. Why? Because at the end of the day, every one of us know that the, the good idea, the brilliant idea is still something like a gold, gold dust. And, but for what will client pay for if he doesn't pay for the idea, but for what can he pay? What is, can be our source of business, all of us here? One thing is clear. It's you need somebody who is reliably, creatively fishing the best ideas out of all these million of internet ideas, of million of ideas that are there. You need a really good creative people. We call it managing ideas, the idea manager. This is what a client will not be, will not be able to be, and will at the end pay for. And of course, the other is piecing all these ideas together that they make sense. Remember the solar company logo, 99 euro. Okay, this was cheap, but what to do with it? Can this guy also develop a consistent idea out of it, a consistent corporate identity of, out of it, etc. This will be the question. And I'm pretty sure and pretty optimistic about our industry that this, the client won't, uh, won't be able to develop it and that this is our source of business. So I'm pretty sure that in 10 years time, I can be in a nice place and venue like here and still hold some speeches um, without dancing for some food. Truth number five is something really, really, really cheap is nothing changes. What do we mean by that? Five good reasons why nothing will change. For example, this will never change, you know, and this won't change either. We have 2,000 friends, but just a handful of good friends. You cannot have 2,000 friends, every one of us know. When the digital revolution is over, you will still go to the bakery and buy some bread. And a lame story is always lame on TV or online. And even if the world is getting even more complicated and incomprehensible, everyone still watches the news. So basically, obviously, we say that just to tell you and ourselves, hey, not everything is digital. I remember that 10 years ago, 20 years ago, some really digital fanatics were like, oh no, there will, won't be any TV and all commercial stores will close down because everyone will be online. But of course this doesn't happen because people are people. And th this, keep that in mind. And then of course, going to, through, to truth number six, of course everything is changing. But you know, it is the balance of things that won't change with things that are really changing. And I don't, I don't need to explain that. This is what makes our world really changes and changes, changing everything. I defined it this way, six billion reasons why nothing will ever be the same. The six billion stands for the six billion people or seven billion people we have. Th this that doesn't count for uh, today, but in 20 years time, we will have six billion people who at the end, can even be something like, we, we already call it, 
Homo sapiens 3.0. It's kind of a new species, you know. We saw the girl, you know, with the three gadgets, and we see this guy here, and it's a it's a completely it's a complete change of behavior, which is for us in communication really important. The learning is. Take Italy, for example. Italy, it's the land of 60 million target groups because every single people, everyone is in his own little world, you know, looking at his own smartphone with his own Facebook profile, with his own etc., etc., and this is just the beginning. And as everyone of you knows, not one of you have the same, not two of you have the same Google site, so it will get more and more individual, more and more own little small world. And this is a major change in our industry. And summarizing it as we say, it's a, the trend is the republic of me. It's 60 million republics in Italy and 6 billion republics in the world, which makes our job, of course, way more complicated than it was. Truth number seven is uh, more about creativity. <laughs> this is a saying in, um, in advertising of the 50s and 60s. It was like, you know, a shampoo, um, producer was like, what should we tell the people outside to buy a shampoo? Okay, um, let's just compose a song, you know, and just sing it. Here's a great example. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello is the shampoo that glorifies your hair. So hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, shampoo. The shampoo is called hello, you know, that's, <laughs> and yeah, this was yesterday's spectacle, you know, just sing it, but of course it would be tomorrow's debacle. And what is a learning for us, for our post-digital times where we are in nowadays, it's of course, even here, you cannot bullshit people of the post-digital world either. Uh, here, just some examples. Um, you don't, as a brand, you don't need to be a non-stop entertainment. Uh, you cannot kind of, because you have 60 million republics of me trying to flirt online with everybody because it's not credible at the end. Um, don't try to be, t to work too hard on Facebook if it's not credible, you know, because if Facebook, Facebook marketing is like gate crashing a party, you know, coming uninvited to a party. So you got to bring a really good bottle of wine, you know, if you uh, crash a Facebook community. In one word, if you have nothing to say, just don't tweet it. So be cool with online, make it smart, but not, you know, like, boof, you know, like the hello shampoo. Coming to truth number eight, who is this? This is uh, maybe Caligula Nero. No, no, this is not. This is the average consumer everywhere in the Western world. This consumer is like, you're getting on my nerve. You must die. You know, the consumer has the choice and he's grown up with the choice and the, young, the younger you are, the more you know you have the choice. So you want your brand being inspiring or you expire. I think this is, in part, it is conventional wisdom for maybe you guys here, but, sometimes, but it's sometimes really hard to convince your client that this is going to happen and this happens. 
Inspiration, of course, it's always Steve Jobs, but okay, it, it still works because he's, you know, it's the CEO giving the last word on all product decisions to just one person. Or it's the presidential candidate who decides to take un unconventional routes for his election campaign. Or in branding, a big brand deciding to disrupt the convention by not showing models, but real people. You remember that, it, it's uh, eight or 10 years ago. And um, this, this, is me this means something that, you know, as I tell it since 10, 20 years, it gets boring and even for you sometimes, but this courage thing is, is key. You, know? it's, you need the courage to not go on the nerves of somebody in communication got to break with convention and tradition and that's that can make the difference that is what our industry industry must still tell every day everybody every client coming to truth number nine we call it brainy is beautiful what does do we mean by that Every one of you knows Mad Men. Mad Men was a lot about, remember, g glamour and you know, beauty. That. Then when I started working at, in uh, advertising and communication, everything was about creativity, about creative team, about one creative idea, etc. Then 10 years ago, everything was about emotionality. You know, you got to get the emotion of people, etc. This is still real, this is still super important, this is still how it works, but more and more important is something really simple, it's intelligence, it's intelligent, not only intelligent ideas by the way, it's intelligent ways, it's intelligent techniques, it's technologies, it's bringing all that together because just being glamorous, creative and emotional, it can be enough for a brand that is already big and that where everyone watches this commercial like Apple or so. But if you're a normal company, this is not enough. You need a very intelligent way to bring out your, basically your creative work um, to the people. And this makes a huge difference and this, sh this shifts our daily work from this pure creative to creative plus a lot of blogger, a lot of technicians, a lot of technology wizards who find ways how to place uh, s uh, stuff, etc. Online media planning, etc. So way more stuff than we had 20 years ago, 10 years ago and even five years ago. You made it. Truth number 10, congratulations, all still here. Thank you, I'm happy. You're really polite, you're Italian guys. I, <laughs> I love you. Uh, communication 10, this is more for advertisers. A brand nowadays is way more like Red Bull is doing it. Everyone of you know Red Bull. Red Bull is, is a, yeah, something like yeah, something like energy drink, but you know, not, not everyone loves it. It's sugar and stuff, but it is so interesting that what they are doing in marketing, as you know, it's they have a TV station called Servers, they have a bulletin, they, they, are, they are like a media brand and not like a product, not like a classic brand. And this makes a big difference. And they, is, they are basically the best marketers in the world how they did it with Red Bull. And this is what a brand nowadays must kind of behave and be. It's a behaving like a broadcaster. Why? Because every one of you expects, expects your brand answering quick. You don't have something like one week time to ask for some car parts or this or that, etc. You are expecting to get your answers really quick and if not today, in 10 years, you will be like that, that you expect it really quick. So for us as communication pros, we need to install a system that helps our client being a broadcaster, broadcast, broadcasting all the time. So at the end of the day, for us, it is about content we are talking. It is, of course, cre creative content, but it is content. content. It is, we must find 
themes and subjects that, are, that people are interested in continuously. So basically, the brand communication manager is more like a programming di director. It's more like a news channel, a, a 365, 24-7 news channel that he is in charge of, that you are in charge of if you're advising a brand. Uh, this is a huge, huge shift in for our daily work. Final question for us was, that's why we installed the team, was what does it mean for us, for us in our agency, how for our daily work? One is, of course, this. It's that, that when we were in, when we were always looking for excellent TV commercial, peaks of creative excellence. Now, as I said, it's about content excellence. It's about stories. It's about what is an inter interesting continuous story that I can kind of work out with the client, with the brand. For the team, there's a huge change too. When I started with advertising, we had a lot of lone superstars, single genius people who are driving one agency. Because basically, you, 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 needed, you just needed one person who was bright, who knew, okay, you should do this and that. Then came kind of the team, you know, the brilliant account guy with the brilliant creative director, you know, who formed a brilliant agency or a copywriter and art director who formed a super team. This was the advertising team 20 years ago, 10 years ago. Nowadays, it's not tennis anymore. It, it is soccer. It is, it is a complicated team with complicated disciplines, with a lot of people interfering together, playing together, training together, etc. And you cannot, as I started with, not control every situation, but you have a well-trained team that is trying to perform best, trying to win at the end. This is the analogy we found that, is, uh, that describes this profound change in our industry. And so basically creativity nowadays we say is a given. And the thing is, you get to form a team of stars. I'm very sorry for this picture for you, but you know, coming from Germany, I must show this picture. Um, but it, this illustrates, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's not just, you know, this guy is brilliant and the other ones are playing with him. It's a little bit, you know, Messi with Argentina was a little bit like that, you know, which is which it's sometimes okay, but the future is a a team where there's not one superstar, it's basically 10, 11 stars you need to form, to, to basically answer all these complicated challenge, challenges we have seen. So what we call it internally in the agency is coming from total football, we say total creativity. Even the goalkeeper is, as you remember Manuel Neuer, you know, is running, you know, through the field, you know, like, you know, even he's a creative, which, which changes the game completely. And this is what we see too. It's the, even the producer, the media producer is a, is a part of the creative team, of the creative inspiration too. So I want to show you that Manuel Neuer's role was, uh, it's not a new one, I found that. Manchmal schimpft sogar eigene Stile stark, wenn ich kann zu viel regiert und nur komisch war. Das macht mir nicht viel, viel ist für mich viel, doch wenn es drauf ankommt, weiß ich, was ich will. Not that bad, isn't it? Even the goal, the, a real creative goalkeeper changing the game, you know, and, and this times 11, this is the new game which makes... Uh, the, well, which epitomizes the challenges of our industry. Okay, so I come to the end, and I had some, yeah, truths. Some are, yeah, conventional wisdom. You saw it. Some are, th I think, uh, unfortunate and a little bit sad because I'm personally, to, I agree, sad that ideas are not well paid anymore. But this is life, so don't complain. We just got to turn it the other way around. 
And that's why I want to finish with the last truth, a comforting truth. No matter how fast technology moves, how unpredictable the weather or how complex the world is, challenges like these have always been the best drivers of new products, markets, and new ideas that change the world. So I just say welcome to the most exciting decade since the invention of printing press. Thank you for listening to me.